Hello Arts 102, welcome to the Texture and Color Unit. Let's talk about texture. Texture is the type of surface for an object. Tactile or touch texture is an actual surface on an actual physical object. So in other words, that just means you can touch it. Visual texture is an illusion created from values changes. So that's what you're seeing on your screen right now. That's a visual texture. I don't have any examples of tactile texture because I can't really uh, upload that to D2L. <laughs> tactile texture is a texture you can touch and feel that it is rough, velvety, slimy, grainy, and so on. Visual texture is an illusion. You can touch a photograph of rough sandpaper, but the photograph doesn't feel rough. The perception of texture is created with value changes. You must comprehend real-world texture to convey the feeling of a surface in a two-dimensional representation. This concept is immensely critical for those of you who are going to get into 3D animation. You're going to have to get this. Pattern, that's an overall design based on a repetition or grouping of elements. Regularly repeating a motif produces a pattern. The more regular the repetition, the stronger the pattern is. Impasto, just um, a tech painting technique, uh, so it's nothing we're going to do in this class, but it doesn't really fit into any other unit. So. Basically, the paint is laid on so thick in impasto that um, it creates a texture on the canvas where the paint's actually coming out of the surface. This is a technique that Vincent van Gogh was known for. If you were to touch this painting, you would actually feel that it's bumpy. You would actually feel the ridges. Now let's talk about color. And this is optional content. This does not appear in a test. I just want you to know about it. So if you want to use color, that you can use it right. Um, color is the visual property perceived from light, a combination of hue, saturation, and lightness. And you'll notice that in your um, uh, Photoshop color picture, you've got a model that represents that hue, saturation, lightness model. So. Um, the hue is the quote-unquote name of the color, what's commonly referred to as the name. That's red, green, yellow, so on. That's Those are called hues. <clears throat> Saturation is the perceived intensity or deepness or vividness of a given hue. Saturated colors tend to jump to the foreground and muted colors recede to the background. And here's a spectrum of the most saturated red down to the least saturated red, which basically is gray. If you get down to 0% saturation, you've got black and white, more or less, or grayscale. Now, <clears throat> just to reiterate, the tendency for fledgling designers when they're choosing colors is to pick the most saturated colors. And you can do a little bit of that for emphasis, but you don't have to pick every color as the most saturated color. It tends to look kind of crummy. Color value or brightness, that is the perceived lightness of a hue corresponding to amplitude, sometimes referred to as tone, value, lightness, or brightness. And there's another little scale, little spectrum to look at. So the, those are different lightnesses of different hues. And on the left, that's just a gray scale. Then we got a blue, a purple, and an orange color. So that's value. Warm colors, basically oranges, reds, and yellows. They tend to be active and hot. They jump to the foreground. So on the warmer side of the spectrum, that's the top left. Cool colors are blues and greens. They tend to be recessive and they recede to the background. And uh, interestingly, this is the opposite of physics. The, the warmer colors in physics are blue and green, and the cooler colors are yellow, and red is actually the coolest color. Food for thought. 
So here's an example of uh, the warm colors jumping to the front and the blue colors, uh, cooler colors I should say, which in this case is blue, they're receding to the back. And you've got kind of a mid-ground of some greens too that that are kind of playing a middle ground role. So there you go. Color schemes and how they work. An analogous color scheme is two or more colors that lie adjacent to one another on the color wheel. So any couple of colors that are close to one another on a color wheel, that's an analogous color scheme. Something like this maple leaf design that goes from green to kind of a lime green to a yellow. Complementary, that's the opposite, basically. A hue's opposite on the color wheel. So um, green and red, purple and yellow, blue and orange, and so on. <clears throat> and here's a design that uses complementary color. Split complementary is a color scheme that uses a range of analogous hues split from a basic key hue with the complementary hue as a contrast. So basically you got your complement and then you take one tone and split it off from that. Um, that's actually the way cooler.adobe.com does it and I've actually seen it also where this looks more like a um, a capital Y instead of a lowercase Y or in other words the um, the complement green is pointing over to that blue green instead of uh, the actual green so the actual complement itself doesn't appear in the color scheme um, I think they're both valid as far as I know so I, I show this example because um, you're probably going to be using the interactive color wheel on Adobe's website and this is what they're going to show you but the, I, as far as I know they're both valid. Triadic, that's going to be three colors equidistant around the hue circle. I should say three hues, not colors. And here's an example of a triadic design. Another one is the Burger King logo, by the way. Monochromatic is, in fact, value gradations on a single hue. One hue only, that's monochromatic. So there you go, there's a monochromatic image. <clears throat> the additive color model uses mixtures of red, green, and blue light to reproduce the visible color spectrum. This applies to pretty much all your electronic devices, monitors, TVs, cell phones, iPads, video games, they all use RGB. The additive production reproduction process uses red, green, and blue light to produce the other colors. Combining one of these additive primary colors with another in equal amounts produces the additive secondary colors cyan, magenta, and yellow. Combining all three primaries in equal intensities produces white. Varying the luminosity of each light color eventually reveals the full gamut of those three lights or colors. And that's basically how a monitor works, or a TV, or a cell phone. Subtractive is sort of the inverse of that. It uses mixtures of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black pigment to reproduce the visible color spectrum. The subtractive reproduction process usually uses cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink to produce the other colors. Actually, black isn't technically part of the model but it's usually in your printer because it would be insane to use equal amounts of cyan magenta and yellow to make black every time you wanted to print some text that would be silly it would be a waste of ink too a subtractive color model describes the mixing of paints dyes inks and natural colorants to create a full range of colors each caused by subtracting or that is absorbing some wavelengths of light and reflecting others the color that a surface displays depends on which colors of the electromagnetic spectrum are reflected by it and therefore made visible. And that's how printing works. Okay, let's take a look at color psychology. The investigation of 
various, the effects of various colors on mood, feelings, human behavior in general. Color psychology is generally considered to be pseudoscience or alternative medicine, medicine by mainstream psychology and is not supported by data from well-designed scientific studies. Hey folks, painting day up here on the satellite loft. Time to spruce up the galley, the companionway. And the can. And the can too, yes. I thought I'd... Can uh, really needs it, man. Wow, Let me okay, you. I thought I'd uh, try a little experiment based on the theory that the color of the room can affect the mood of said room's occupants. For instance, hmm. this color of green is used in prisons because it's said to calm the inmates down. How does this make you guys feel? Well, I feel calm, placid, sort of a Jimmy Carter-like serenity. I find I have the inexplicable desire to date Lisa Stansfield. That figures. How about this? This orange is bright, cheery, said to increase appetite. Oh, this may sound odd, but I feel bitter and ignored, you callous snobs. It increases my desire to date Lisa Stansfield, but in particular, I want to take her to see competitive curling. I don't know why I even bother, but let's try one more. How about this one? This is a morose blackish crimson, the color of dry blood, the exact color of the last room in Poe's mask of the Red Death. One look at it is said to drive its occupants mad. Mad, I tell you, mad. <laughs> How does it make you feel, hmm? Hmm? Um, I'm sticking with the Stansfield bit. I think it'd be perfect for the can. Yeah. No, in there I'm going to use this eggshell color. <laughs> Oh, get it away, devils, Mike. Get it away. <laughs> Good, that'll keep him out of my biffy. We'll be right back. Ah, horrible! Devils! Yeah, how does this color make you feel? Hmm. It makes me want to invest everything I have in steam-powered weaving machines. Me too. Man, that's eerie how colors can influence you. Wow, <laughs> weird. Oh, uh, pearls. All right, there you go. So color psychology is a social constructed linkage that varies with time, place, and culture. <clears throat> Most empirical evidence suggests that there is no single universal psychological reaction to any particular color. For instance, white in Western culture typically symbolizes purity, but in Eastern culture it can symbolize death and was historically the color worn at funerals in some parts of China, Korea, and Japan. In fact, even members of different age groups from the same culture sometimes react differently to the same colors. With all that said, here's the conventional wisdom on which emotions are evoked by color in modern Western American culture. White is said to symbolize purity, life, truth, uh, light, snow, peace, surrender, air, and reverence. Black equals ominous, death, funerals, intelligence in terms of graduation robes, and evil. Gray equals old age, neutrality, subtlety, humility, pessimism, boredom, decay, and formality. Red actually does strike a chord with most cultures, might be because it's the color of blood, but um, it does increase respiration and heartbeats, one of the few that actually has a universal reaction. It does increase your respiration a little bit and your blood pressure a little bit. Um, said to be associated with fire and heat, passion, love, excitement, speed, blood, anger, communism, and revolution. And that's red. Orange, said to increase appetite, energy, enthusiasm. Uh, it feels like heat, warning or danger, playfulness, balance somewhere between the hotness of red and the cheerfulness of yellow. Yellow is playful and cheerful, happy, represents sunlight, springtime, optimism, and it's energetic and sporty. Green is said to represent nature, initiative, wealth, and money, fertility, and youth. Blue is said to have a calming effect. It's non-threatening, it's confident, stable, represents coolness, conservatism, water and ice, loyalty and trust, dependability, and technology a lot of times, and nobility. Indigo is said to represent spirituality, breath, intuition, and the sky. Violet or purple represents magic, creativity, 
wisdom, enlightenment, the harmony of the universe, and the color of royalty. That's because in medieval times, purple pigment was very difficult to produce. Pink is tranquilizing. Sometimes prison cells are pink. Represents spring, gratitude, appreciation, health, romance, flirtatiousness, and girly stuff. Brown is the color of dirt. It's an earthy color. It's often coupled with green as a nature environmental kind of design. Uh, calm represents calm. Filth sometimes. Poverty, roughness, simplicity, and friendliness. Well, whether or not all that is true, it's definitely undeniable that the feel of the same composition is radically altered by the color scheme, whether it is analogous, monochromatic, triadic, complementary, or split complementary. Furthermore, the feel of the same composition is radically altered by the choice of the hues. So, for example, some different hue schemes. Almost makes you question which element is in the foreground and which is in the background.